WindPower is a UPS monitoring software. In the previous video, we have seen brief explanation about WindPower, and we have seen how to download, install, basic configuration of the WindPower software. In this video we will see all the configuration and monitoring the real-time UPS through WindPower software. If you have not watched previous video yet, please go back and check part 1 first to get clear idea about software. Link given in the description. Without any ado, let's start the video. First of all, connect UPS to PC via USB cable. Then, open the software by clicking on its icon from desktop. If the user wants to configure software setting, user should be administrator of the software first. The default is read only. Can't configure settings. Be software administrator to do that. Select the agent name or computer name in the tree. Then, go to system from main menu. Then, select act as administrator. There will be a dialog shown. Input password and click OK button. To find the connected devices, user should auto search. To do that, go to system from main menu. Then, click on auto search device. The software starts searching UPS, connected to system via USB, and set up communication between software and UPS. Software can search for all the UPS connected to the communication ports. Software communicates with UPS via COM port. The requirement is, there should be RS-232 hardware port, or RS-232 virtual port and computer. Software can communicate with four UPS via RS-232 port at most at the same time. As you can see on the software interface window, a UPS found. It's showing all the details of founded UPS, such as, location, LAN, or, WAN, IP address, or, MAC address, mode, offline, or, online, status, normal, or, faulty, connected load, in percentage. Let's select UPS from list, and, dual click on it. A new interface screen with UPS block diagram will open. In this window, the UPS flow chart, and, UPS parameters will be shown. Here, you will have all the detailed, overview of the UPS for monitoring. Such as, input voltage, frequency, battery charging percentage, battery input voltage, backup remaining time, internal temperature, output load, number of outputs on, and, output voltage. If you observe the flow chart of the UPS, current flowing from input to output via inverter, in between charger, and, batteries are connected. Let's try to off the input power for UPS. Once the input power is off, software will give warning message to user. As you can see on the screen, it's showing in pop-up that is power failed. And the red indicator indicating at input of the UPS. Now flow chart changed, current flowing from battery to load. It means the system is running on battery. Let's make UPS normal condition. To do that, on input power of the UPS, then check the flow chart. Software is working fine with UPS. Let's check other parameters of the software. To do that, go to main menu, then logs. Click on event log. Event log viewer window will open. Here, User can see all the events logs in details. User can delete or export the events by selecting checkbox for each event from the list. Let's close this window and go back to logs. Then, open data log. Data log viewer window will open. User can see detailed logs for UPS such as input voltage, output voltage, battery voltage, input frequency, output frequency, output load and internal temperature. User can delete or export the data log files by selecting each log from the list through clicking on checkbox. Let's close this window and 
Open next option in log. That is, recorded settings. Here user can configure log parameters, such as, how many event logs can be recorded, and, how many data log can be recorded with the time intervals in the UPS. User can configure as per site requirements. Once settings done, click on OK. Let's open device control parameters. To do that, go to main menu. Then, device. Then, click on device control parameters. Here user can configure bypass, eco mode, and operation settings, such as buzzer, auto reboot, voltage, and frequency ranges, as per site requirements. Once settings done, click on OK. Go to next option, that is, load segment control settings. If you select UPS node, and try to find load segment control settings from menu, item is disabled, that means the UPS don't support load segment function. Or, if item is enabled, that means the UPS support load segment function. When the shutdown timer is minus 1, that means, the load segment won't shut down, automatically when AC fails. Or, when the shutdown timer is zero, that means, the load segment will shut down, immediately when AC fails. Or, when the shutdown timer is the value between 1, and, 32,767, that means, the load segment will shut down, after the setting value time when AC fails. And, when the startup timer is minus 1, that means, the load segment won't restart, automatically when AC restores. Or, when the startup timer is zero, that means, the load segment will restart, immediately when AC restores. Or, when the startup timer is the value between 1, and, 32,767, that means, the load segment will restart, after the setting value time when AC restores. Configure the settings, as per site requirements. Then, Click on Apply. Next go to Event Action. It's Real-Time Warning Dialog. When UPS status is abnormal, software will pop up Warning Dialog to notify user. Warning Dialog on local computer means that the Warning Dialog will pop up on local computer, communicating with UPS when UPS status is abnormal. Open Event Action from menu to set Warning Dialog pop-up on the screen, or not. If the option of pop-up warning for all events is selected, software will pop-up warning dialog when event happens, and on Linux OS, there will be event broadcast messages shown on terminal. If the option of pop-up warning for all events is unselected, software won't pop-up warning dialog when event happens. If user want to set the event being logged in Windows system logs when event happens, software will write the event log in Windows system logs. Select Events, and, set the option of System Log, to set event logs being written, in Windows System Log files. Make the configurations. Then, click on OK. Go to Next option. Shutdown Parameters. It's a UPS shutdown control settings. When UPS is abnormal, software will shut down UPS output. There are five conditions, no matter which one condition met. Software will send shutdown command to UPS. Condition 1, when the battery backup time is exhausted, after AC fail. Condition 2, when UPS battery low. Condition 3, when UPS battery capacity is at the setting value, or, lower. Condition 4, when UPS battery remaining time is below the setting value. And, Condition 5, schedule shutdown UPS output on specific time or weekly. Condition 1, 2, 3, and 4 should be configured here. Select the checkbox of Allow Battery to Discharge for and set the backup time according to UPS load. The default value of battery backup time is 10 minutes. When AC fails, software will inform user the input of UPS is abnormal and how long time UPS output will be shut down. Select the checkbox of Begin shutdown immediately when battery is low. Select the checkbox of Begin shutdown when UPS battery is at 40% capacity, or, lower. Then, change the value according to the site conditions, from drop-down list.
when UPS battery remaining time is below the setting value. Select the checkbox of Shut down when remaining battery time is below 2 minutes. When AC fails, software will inform user the input of UPS is abnormal. When UPS battery remaining time is below the setting value, software will send shutdown command to UPS. To protect systems and servers connected to UPS output, shut down safely before UPS output is off. Software can shut down the local computer communicating with UPS and also can shut down the remote computer whose input connected to UPS output. To safely shut down the computer communicating with UPS before UPS output is off, select the checkbox of system and then select hibernate or shutdown. If user selects shutdown, software will shut down computer once condition is met. If user select hibernate, software will hibernate the computer once condition is met. Run command file before shutdown. The function means that software will run the command file before system shutdown. Select the checkbox of run command file before shutdown and add the correct path of the command file by clicking on browse button. Make sure the command file can be executed normally on the system before setting the file path to software. In earlier versions of Windows, all services run in session 0 along with applications. This situation poses a security risk in Windows Vista and Later versions of Windows, the operating system isolates services in session 0 and runs applications in other sessions. To make remote computer shutdown protection, software installed on local computer will send shutdown command to remote computers for safely shutdown before UPS output is off. In the next section, for the UPS series we will see how to shut down the remote computer from the local computer software. Once the configuration done, Click on OK. Next go to Wake on LAN setting. Wake on LAN function is used for once AC fails, software will shut down UPS output and computer. If AC restores, the computer with software restarts, the computer can wake up other computers in the LAN. This function will be cover in upcoming video. Next go to battery self test now. UPS battery should be in good status to supply power for key devices when AC fails. So battery self test function is very important to check battery status. Battery self test includes self test immediately and schedule test. There are three types of battery self test. Type 1 battery self test for 10 seconds. Type 2 Battery self-test until battery low. Type 3, battery self-test for N minutes. The range of N is from 1 to 99. Default value of N is 10 minutes. Let's test the battery. I will select first option, that is battery self-test for 10 seconds, then click on OK. As you can see on the screen, the flow chart has been changed, and the alarm showing battery self-test. Until 10 seconds, it will test. Then, the flow chart will change. As you can see on the screen, now it has been changed. Next go to, Battery Self-Test Schedule. On, UPS Test Manager window, user can set Battery Self-Test, Task. On the calendar, the blue point is Schedule Battery Self-Test, Task. User can add Schedule Battery Self-Test, Task, by clicking on Add Test button and modify or remove battery self-test task by clicking on modify or remove button. Let's make a schedule. To do that, click on add test. A new window will open. Select date, time, type of test, and UPS from the list. Then, click on OK. As you can see on the screen, one task added in the list. It means the schedule has been added in the UPS for battery self-test. Once the configuration have done, click on OK. Go to next option, UPS on and off schedule. Here, user can set schedule task for shutdown and restart UPS on specific time or week. The time UPS shutdown 
can last for time range from 1 to 9,999 seconds. That means, the time from UPS output shutdown, to output restart, be set from 1 to 9,999 seconds. The shutdown task list, and, the calendar are shown on the dialog window. On the calendar, the red point is schedule for shutdown task. The green is schedule for restart task. The blue point is schedule for battery self-test task. User can add schedule shutdown task by clicking on add UPS, on, and, off button, and, modify, or, remove schedule by clicking on modify, or, remove button. The time of new task, can't be same as the task, that has been added earlier, once configuration done for scheduling. Click on, OK. When schedule task has been added, software will pop up warning dialog to remind user, that UPS will be shut down. The shutdown warning dialog will pop up at the time interval, the warning time interval, and the time being to count down can be set in the shutdown setting. Next go to view schedule. Here, user can view all the schedule set and configured by users. Let's close this window. User can get email notifications from the software. When UPS status is abnormal, software will send email notifications about abnormal events. To do the settings, go to Main Menu, Tools, then, Open Email Settings. Email Settings, Wizard will open. User can input, SMTP Server Name, or, IP Address according to SMTP Server. The name, and, Phone number of the sender information can be set by software administration. The setting information will be shown in email content. Add receiver email address by clicking on Add button. Maximum 20 email addresses can be added to each software. To get test email from the software, select Added email address. Then, click on Test button. A message from software. That is, are you sure to send a test email to assigned mail address? Click on OK. The test mail has been initiated. You are recommended to have a check on that email account to see if you can receive it. Click on OK. After adding the receiver email address, select the abnormal events from the list to get particular notifications. Once email configuration finished, click on OK. User can get SMS notifications from the software. When UPS status is abnormal, software will send SMS notifications about abnormal events. To do the settings, go to Main Menu, Tools, then, Open SMS Settings. SMS Setting Wizard will open, select port, that connects with modem. The modem should support GSM function. Select the baud rate, depending on different modem model. Here, attention should be paid. If user have previously used to send short messages with other software, the software will be set, the default baud rate, into previous baud rates, so user should test, one by one to find proper SMS baud rate. Add receiver phone number, by clicking on add button. Select the abnormal events in the event from list, and, select phone number. When the abnormal event happens, software will send SMS to the phone number. Click Test button to test SMS, sent successfully or not. Maximum 5 phone numbers can be added in each software. Once SMS configuration finished, click on OK. Remaining configuration will be covered in upcoming videos. Hope you learn how to configure and interface UPS with PC through WindPower software. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. It boosts our confidence to make more technical videos in future.